coming back. So they said, but we need people behind the camera. That was just a phrase. They basically, but they were saying, we can see that you're good in technical things and da 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 da. We want, can you, we want you to run the lights for this next production we're going to do, mm -hmm. right? And we'll teach you how to be a stage manager. Right. right. And the production was Daddy Goodness. Okay. And that's, that it was amazing production. Daddy Goodness, Richard Wright's uh, uh, thing that he adapted. What years was this? This was 68. Okay. This, night, this is the summer of 68. Okay. In fact, my, too bad I lost it, don't have it. But my yearbook, when I graduated from Theodore Roosevelt High School, had everybody signed my yearbook. Right. Uh, you know, every Roger and Cash, all these, all these people, you see, uh, all these people that were in the play, right. they all signed my, signed my yearbook. Denise Nichols and all that stuff. Uh, 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 Arthur French, all these people. So how long were you at the NEC then? I was, at, but I was at the NEC from then, from 68, I guess, yeah, from 60, if you want to say 60, it was 67, to when I went to the Air Force in early 1970. Okay. You know, so... That was it, but but then 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 we just. But you had made that 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 change to doing behind the camera work. And stuff yeah, but, like. but doing theater, but okay. doing back because you know we, we we hang hang the lights, we right. we, we, we paint Congress Harvest, yeah. you know we, that's we painted the sets, you know and stuff right. like that's where we learned stick fighting. Everything we had to do, everything the thing we did. So stick fighting, I'm actually authentic African because in Africa you stick fight. So I can just, I, I carry a stick now because I learned stick fighting here. You know, I'm just saying it was like a weird. I don't want to say childhood I had, but it was a weird thing. Cause I didn't plan this stuff. I just go along. So you was on your way, but so how did the Air Force come in there? Where did the Air Force come from? You all of a sudden you on the NEC on the okay. East Side and you in the okay. Air Force. Okay, hold on a second. See, now you remember. I thought we were going to talk about something. Else. Okay, okay, here we go. I'll be as quick as possible. <laughs> we're not staying on it long. No, I no, I, I got you. I got you. I got you. No, no worries. Uh, when I and when I went to high school, yeah, high school. Uh, when I was like 16, maybe I've been about 16, and we started the Afro American Club. This was very political times. You know, this is when, like, for instance, the last poets, this is later than that, the last poets had a thing at uh, uh, Fordham University when I first saw them, you know, mm -hmm. original last poets, whatever right. have you. That was when we had a big protest. All the, all the Bronx schools came together, Bronx High School of Science. This is like 68 now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, before, this was like 67. Uh, the, the Bronx High School. Uh, uh, Bronx High School Science to protest what was going, the, the Vietnam War and all the rest of that stuff. Now, when I got to college, which I went to uh, Bronx Community College, right, I was a part of what's called a revolutionary cell. When I say revolutionary cell, like everybody else was doing what they were doing, but I, but it was was three men, three, three boys, three girls. We were three girls, and then these two guys that facilitated, helped us. Uh, they were B Bobby and Billy Shepard, mm -hmm. who, uh, they changed their name. They're in film. They do the film now. It doesn't matter. But they, uh, they had just come back from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And they, in our little cell, we studied, we were studying the Krumba, we studied, you know, the Mao, you know, whatever it is. Red book, uh, everything. Yeah, red, red, uh, ideologies. Uh, yeah, Walter Rodney, whatever it was, we, we were studying it. But we were like a little thing. We were just having a good time. Study our study group. Everybody was doing what they were doing. We was having a good time. But then, then, some, for some reason, we, we took over the school. Now I was a part of this little cell, and we would what we would do. We would give the information to the to, to we would give the information to the to the big muckety mucks, and and uh, 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 that, that's what we do. We give it to the big muckety mucks, and then they would make their decisions. The the, 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 the club is called Simba. Simba was the name of the the thing. And Lord, because they did that, all of a sudden, all us people were behind the scenes. We had to take positions of responsibility because we we. we, we Took over the school, shut it down, whatever happened. My responsibility, this is kind of interesting. Well, you know, had the old telephone things where you plug it in. Hello, da, 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 yeah, like switchboard. That? That's a switchboard. Thank you. Well, I was in charge of the switchboard. The people coming in, and I told them, I said, hey. Yeah, yeah. I was, charge. I was in charge of the guy. You had to put somebody in charge, right? And so my thing, and I talk. Here's what we say when they answer when they call the school. They say, Bronx Community College. That this school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. But blah, blah, blah. Bronx Community College, the school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. But I want to, Bronx Community College, you can speak to anyone. <laughs> and then one time, the Bronx DA got on the thing, right? And he said, <laughs> he got, he's, and, 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 and somebody was all freaked out. And they called me because I like supervisor. And I came up and said, what's the matter? And I said, hello, Bronx Community College, the school has been liberated. You can't speak to anyone. He said, this is the Bronx DA. You know, I'll come and kick your, uh, what, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. I said, this is Bronx Community College. He said, who is this? I want to do it. Who is this? I said, Santa Claus. I just hung up with this. Ah, well, we didn't care about these guys. So I guess that's, that's my, my first communications thing. I guess my first, 
in the communication. It was hilarious. You should have been there. So we took up the school. It was man, we, that's when Thorn Hearns Clark, they would ferry food to us because we just locked we locked everything down. Oh, y'all locked the school down. Oh yeah. Okay, no, okay. we took oh hey, this is serious time. This ain't no Right. This ain't Columbia, look, Columbia was doing the same. Dan right. was doing Columbia, and he, they, were, they, yeah. they were they were they were city sitting, college too. City, city college, all that stuff was happening at the same time. So that's how. It, okay, here's what happened. Now, if you remember back then, you had the uh, what, what do you call it? The lottery. The, um, the, the, the Yeah, the draft. The draft. The board. Yeah, and they just instituted a lottery with your with your number, whatever yeah. it is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, so people had the choice. You can. Uh, you know, I don't know. Run the run out the country, go uh, be a go to jail, I guess, mm -hmm. or you can go and serve. You know right. what I mean? Well, you know, I don't know why how it happened, but it happened rather quickly. I oh, oh anyways, so one year, the first year, I wasn't part of it because I wasn't of age. Then next year, my number was one fifteen, okay, mm -hmm. out of three hundred sixty five. But that's not the trick. You have to come from the South Bronx. You could have been number. 349 it didn't matter because everybody you because if you was because people were in jail or whatever so your because it was draft board was for your your area so i was going no matter what right i knew what my number was and so i said i talked to my brother because he was a merchant marine he was a merchant marine i said man blah 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 i said i'm thinking of, i don't you know I, I said i'm not going into army because because that's just fodder you know they just go you know you just you, you just in six weeks you know you're in the street one week Six weeks later, you're in the middle of Vietnam fighting with some 13 you had no no beef with, right? I said, you know, my brother, I said, uh, I'm not going to Marines. Well, you know, uh, kill them. That's I mean, that's their money. That's just, you know, I'm a I'm a writer. Not, I'm a I'm a writer. Not, not a not a writer. killer. You know, <laughs> you know, look at my hands. I'm not a worker. Look at my look at these hands. This is not, these are, these are lovers' hands. These are massage hands. These are <laughs> okay. So that those two were out, right? My brother said, no, you shouldn't go in the Navy because what they do is like you might be 25 black guys on a ship of like, you know, whatever, thousands of, of white guys. And most of those white guys, for some reason, some reason, then they took a lot of white guys from the South, the South to right? go to the Navy. I have no idea why they did that, but that was it. My brother said, nah, that's not the thing to do. And how he survived, he just, well, he was a merchant marine. They bothered, he just, that doesn't matter. So he said, but you know, said, maybe you should go to the Air Force. Now, unbeknownst to people, okay, I'm gonna say something that doesn't, I'm not gonna, this is, not, this is just fact. I think of myself as average, but in fact, I'm sort of smart. I don't wanna say it like that, I'm sort of okay. intelligent okay. like that. You, you have a, yes, you do, I, I, I would say you have a high IQ. Yes, yeah, so, well, I don't know about high IQ, I'm just, you know, whatever. You, 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 your knife is sharp. Okay, so what happened, I said, well, I'll take the test for the Air Force, because the mission of the Air Force is to keep them flying, keep them flying. Meaning the pilots, you're behind it. <laughs> but it's the hardest test, you know. So I just took the test. You know, I don't say of course, but I passed. You know what I mean? So and it, so I was in the Air Force. So my choice was go to jail, leave the country, blah blah, whatever it is, whatever it is, or do that. I said I'll do my four years and I'll get out of here. That's just I, I didn't care. So people didn't even know. And one day I was there, next day I'm gone. I'm, I'm in Texas, whatever the hell it is. And I wasn't worried. I, was, I wanted to get back to, that's what I wanted to get back to theater. I said, all I want to do is do my time and get back to, get out of here, get back to theater. I'm obligated, blah, 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 blah. That's my, that was in my head, you know what I mean? I don't care. So when I got into the Air Force, I said, I don't care what, you me a sanitation person. I don't care what the job is. I don't, you know, I just want to get out of here, you know what I mean? Well, I was supposed to be a, what's called an a air medical specialist, which is like a flying nurse. I didn't care, I didn't know, I didn't care. But when I was waiting for, was waiting for the orders, something came down and they got a, a group of us into the office, you know what I mean? And I looked around, all these guys are black and you know, black and, and Mexican, black and Puerto Rican and Mexican. The guy says, you've been reassigned. He was really a black white guy, he was, he was, he was upset. You've been reassigned, you're gonna be lab technicians. Well, sir, they're dealing with this, but your orders are coming down, blah, 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 get out of here. What the heck's going on? What happened because of the 60s, because all the rises and the NWACP, they said these jobs in, 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 arm, in, in, in armed forces, you keep on making them, you know, cooks or whatever have you. We want better jobs. And so lab technicians is one of the, the longest schools, one of the best things, blah, 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 blah. So I became a lab technician. Uh, lucky, well, I say lucky for me. And, you know, it was real amazing. They were good. I did, we did everything. Autopsy, everything from autopsy, from taking it to autopsy. Everything, you were thoroughly trained when you were in the military, right? Yeah. 
And I did that for two years afterwards, but it's not my thing. I don't know. Oh, in Texas? No, 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 I'm sorry. Texas is your basic training. Then 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 Shepherd Air Force Base was the uh was the what you have you had like what six six hours a day, six days a week of your uh, whatever your specialty is. Mine was the thing. That was a long and yeah. our our school was long. I think our school was like nine months. It was a long school, which means that it was it was a prestigious job, right? Then when I finished with that, my son, my did you have the practical training? That was in Ohio. That's where my son was born, in Ohio, mm-hmm. right? And so that was like, I think that was, then I, then I was, then, then from there, I, I was a lab technician. Then I go to, then they stationed me at McGuire Air Force Base. So I never left the country during Vietnam. Okay. But this is, this, I have to tell you something about this. Very interesting. At McGuire, I could tell how the war was going because they, there was a, they, they shipped the blood out to so going to Vietnam from there. So I could tell by the amount of blood, whatever, what, 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 what was going on. It was bad or good or whatever yeah. it is like that. So, so, so that's what I did. But here, I would like to tell people this. They said, but you was in the military and everybody's against the military. I said, you don't understand. When I was in the military at the leg, you know what I did? I had, because we was in a dispensary. Next door was the, was the uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Fort, Fort Dix, which had the big hospital, Ralston, whatever that big hospital is. So if, if, if it was a big New case. New Jersey? Yeah, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. So, if we, so if it wasn't a, 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 a we were, if it was a really seriously sent over to the hospital, right? We had so many people in the lab because unbeknownst, again, most of the smart people, the, the smartest people in the world at that particular point, the young people, were in the Air Force because they all took this as they had the same idea I had. <laughs> so anyway, so what I did, we had a lot of people in the lab. So what we did was I became the um, the overnight person. But, but I, had a, I had a charm career, let me put that. But what I also did when I got to that base, I had, a, I had an NCOIC uh, 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 CO, uh, uh, sergeant that was in charge of the lab. He was a black guy, Bill Clapp. And that was the only other black guy that we had three, three white guys. And so what I did is I, I said, look, we, we're here in the community. We should do sickle cell testing and lead poison testing. And Bill said, yeah, because we had all the facilities. So what we did is we started to go, we went to uh, the surrounding uh, uh, Pemberton, all the surrounding things. And we even went up to, to, to Far Rockaway. Doing these tests. In fact, we got a, there's a picture of me with, with Mayor Lindsay. They gave us an award or whatever have you. So, in fact, I used the Air Force thing to do community work rather than killing people in Vietnam. Right. So, so, so I'm just trying to say that's what happened. Okay, all right. So, okay, so we got through that Air Force thing, mm-hmm. and we not, and, and when is the day that you know that you made this this commitment to social activ- active activity? Because it must have been in high school because you were in this cell. What, what, what brought that on? Like you know, well, like, the, the cell thing was in, it was in uh, college. No, but high school. I was, I, I was one of the co-founders of the Afro American Club at Theodore Roosevelt High School. Yeah, but how did that happen? What, what, like your background. What, what brought you into that background about being an uh, activist or all this oh, thing I, about I, I, the I, folk? I, okay, I see what you're saying. Um, well, I was. You know, everybody that's gonna be like 13, 14 years old. I'm gonna do this. I mean, there had to be some reading done before that. So there had to be some kind of influence. Somebody, okay. somebody you saw that just said, uh, "I'm gonna be. I'm gonna help people." Mm-hmm. I'm going to help African people. Okay. There was a, in the 60s, there was a, the New York City Mission Society Cadet Corps. It was then looked, taken over by Har You Act. You know Har Okay, yeah. Okay. Jim, James, whatever his name was. Yeah, right, right. So, so uh, whatever, yeah. But, 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 but Will Burgey was in charge of the Cadet Corps, and they got absorbed into, basically, they got the money from Har You. Yeah. So I grew up in the Cadet Corps from nine years old. Okay. There you and, go. and the Cadet Corps, we are taught, we all get from the project, we are taught to serve. Yeah, I understand that. That's the whole thing. That we are taught, we're, and that's, that's, that's it. Yeah, so, and then, then people came through the Kinder Corps, like, like John Henry Clark taught, you know, we, all, all the brains, you know, they came through there, whatever have you. My fraternity brothers, you, you know, I mean, I'm, right now people have got people that, that, that are doctors and whatever, and blah, 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 they all came through the Kinder Corps. Big, you know. Okay, okay. You know, and they're my fraternity, you know. So yeah. I, I, really, I understand now that you got, you got it that young. And, you know, because those those programs like How You Act, you know, they, they were important in our communities as, as it helped change mm-hmm. my life, organizations like that. So then you got to the Air Force. We got out of the Air Force now. <laughs> yeah. we, we, had, we had NEC, then we get side barred to the Air Force and yeah. going into the lab technician. Yeah. Right. Now, how do you come back? What's, what, what happens okay. when you come back? All right, all right, Sloan, okay. <laughs> here's your papers. See you. Okay. Then what happened, I, I, uh, I had got turned, uh, I should say this, since I took over Bronx Community College, I sort of got, I want to say got kicked out, but let's say it wasn't tenable to be there anymore. And so that, that, then I went to the Air Force. But when I came out, but I got turned off for school. But when I was in the Air Force, I started taking extension courses. 
from Trent State College. Mm -hmm. And I found two courses. I've, let me advise everybody this. I took a course, two philosophy courses. One was logic, and the other one's something like comparative religion. Okay. If you're in school right now, okay, wait, take a course in logic. Just take a course of course. Everything is based on Aristotelian logic. I'm talking about the educational system. If you know, if you get logic, that basic thing, it's like it's like being it's being an, an artist. I say if you if you're an artist, no matter what you do, take a course in anatomy. You know, with, with the skeleton anatomy. Right. Then after that, you can do what you want. So mm -hmm. that's what happened. I I I I when when I got when I uh, when I was in the Air Force, I took the extension courses. So when I got out, I went I went right to Livingston College, you New know, Jersey. in New Jersey, and and. And so I, I finished my undergraduate degree, and it was in communications. Communications. But, um, but it wasn't radio. That was interesting. I, my, 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 my thing in communications was video and television production. Okay. But my, I had my own radio program over at the broadcast station. At Livingston? No, no, at, at Rutgers. At Rutgers. Were, Livingston's part of Rutgers, was part of Rutgers. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They, they destroyed okay. the school. Okay, so this is where you... Avery Brooks and yeah, yeah, uh, Avery, yeah. Emmanuel Billingsley. Yeah, yeah, oh, Emmanuel. Oh, God. Emmanuel, I heard that he's around someplace. He's one of my I, best friends. <clears throat> really? That's what I just Man, we was together last week. I, you really? The singer, I can't, I don't even want to start. I don't even want to start. I, you know, so I, mean, I don't even want to start. So, so this is this thing, so Livingston, like, so, you, so you're still in one of these progressive kind of situations, but that was a yeah. progressive situation. Yeah, but people don't understand. Livingston College, I, this, this is very important, right? You know, you, you, you had your, your Berkeley's, you had your, you know, uh, what's that, the old Westbury, whatever you know. Well, I went to school. Yeah. Oh, you went, so you went to a radical school. So, okay, Antioch, there you go. Antioch. Ant Antioch Livingston, was another one. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. One of our teachers came back. Okay, Livingston College, you have to think of it like this. It was like an HBCU in the middle of an Ivy League uh, uh, university. Right. And they hated it so much, they killed it. Mm -hmm. In fact, Avery, we, we did this thing one called the Death of Livingston College, a funeral, something like that. And we was just holding, we were protesting. And even then, I was a, oh, mm -hmm. I was a pistol, man, you know. I mean, I, I, I created poetry groups. And we got all Brooks was teaching there then. Uh, Avery, no, 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 no. Because he, he did his undergraduate at Oberlin. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> and he did his master's there or something like that. Okay. Or something like that. Right. By the time we hooked up, I might say hooked up, but, you know, he would come over to ours because we had a theater over there. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernard Johnson, or Matthew Bernard Johnson, was a great actor, you know what I mean? Right. He was teaching. Oh, he was teaching over at Livingston. Okay. Avery wasn't teaching yet, I don't okay. think. All right. But Avery, they were friends of could, could, could really, And Avery was, you know, music. James Spaulding was in. I, I right. was, yeah. was, uh, was in my graduating class, whatever right. stuff. Larry. Uh, Larry. Larry, uh, Larry Ridley. Larry you know, Ridley. he had. He was the head of the department. Mm -hmm. I saw all the jazz people came through there. Yes. Everybody of note came through there, right. to, at that time. Okay, so you. Were, I see now. I see now. You have this. You have this. Uh, thing I see, you are very progressive. How are you at Livingston? He's mm -hmm. all so mm -hmm. you very. You have this uh, really progressive uh, base and track. So now you get out of the Air Force, you go to Livingston. That's right. Now what? Mm -hmm. and, and that's when you started to branch out into. No, what happened was I wanted to because I want to go back to theater. I want to take uh, classes. I want to take uh, speech classes. But there was over at Douglas College. They all stepped out. That's how I ended up in the communications department doing all this stuff. Okay, then I graduate. My undergraduate, I graduate with you know, whatever it is. And then for, I didn't, for some reason, I, I was, oh, I wrote a long poem, what am I going to call the, the Interrogation of Haven was the name of the poem. Very uh, epic poem, right? So what you I don't had, say so yourself, but go on. No, no, an epic poem means it's very right. long. Okay, it's very long. Actually, is it? No, 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 no. good you say that. I did this poem when I was at, when I was taking those extension courses. I had, a, had an English teacher, his name is William Craycraft, never forget, I call him CC. Unbelievable. And we, when in one week I wrote all these little poems. And, we, and you have to do the poems, you have to do so your, your creation in class. So every, every poem I said, they would say like, nah, nah, thumbs up, nah. And then, so every, I remember maybe about uh, 12 poems, they all put thumb downs, thumb downs on it. So I got all mad. <laughs> I said, get mad, I got upset, right? <laughs> So that next that weekend, I went up to New York and I just walked around Harlem and I kept on hearing people skim me the sky, but they're saying kind of things that they were selling herbs, you know what I mean? Right. So immediately I wrote this epic poem, the interrogation heavy, about you know the ghetto, whatever have you. Then so I had that poem that was before I kept in Livingston. At, then then when I then when I graduated Livingston, I took that poem and turned it into a play called Haven, right? right? And at the same time, I wrote this other play called Crystal Burns, okay. right? A four-person play. They both both were pretty good, I, I guess. Okay. I, and, uh, but on the strength of those two plays, I submitted to uh, uh, to the graduate to, to uh, the um, MFA program for um, um, for what do you call that? Um, 
at the time it was called the, the School of Performing Arts, but okay. now they changed it. I forget what they changed it to now. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, Jack Benton Benton was in charge. But they accepted me in the playwright program. So me and his other sister were the only two black people in the scene. So I spent time writing plays. Okay. And But here's the trick. Let me tell you what happened. This is very important. And finally, uh, at all kinds of different times, I'm always trying to do something different, right? The beginning of the, I think it was the second semester, the second year, the second year, somewhere in there, I wrote a play called, I wrote three, not one acts, they, yeah, it's sort of one acts, but they all connect together. Right. One was called A Pig's Death, mm -hmm. right? And so I presented that in the class, and it, you could see, no, we presented, you could see there was sort of plotting, there was, something was happening. And they said, oh, Anthony, it's fine. We have a question for you. Okay, fine. Your play is fine. We have a question for you. How come in all your plays, a white person dies? <laughs> now, here's a, the here's a weird thing. Tell you, Craig, I kid you not. I never knew that. I never thought it never crossed my mind. But because, you know, I'm quick with that. I said, well, you kill black people all the time. That's what I said. What was my retort right away? Right. They just squashed it. And when you look at that play, no, what's, anyway, when you look, it's, it's, it, and in fact, in that play, it was acknowledged by the head of the department, everybody else, that was a perfect play. And mm -hmm. it is a perfect play. Mm -hmm. It was a perfect play for what plays are. And they wanted me to continue that thing. And I wasn't doing it. I started going all kinds of weird things. And they were really upset with me because I'm going, I'm in school. I, I know, okay, and I wrote the perfect play. Because they, they're grooming you for Broadway or something like that. I wasn't in, that wasn't in my head, right. you know? I, so anyway, I, 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 right before I graduated, I did, I, I did the test and everything, but I didn't submit the, the, the thesis, which was just to write a play which was the easiest thing in the world. For some reason, I can't tell you, Craig, I'm, I'm, I am connected to some kind of universe. I don't, wherever the universe takes me, I just go. I don't, I don't plan things, I just go, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I didn't. Luckily I didn't because if I got my degree, I would be teaching theater someplace in some whatever like a friend of mine does now. Right. <clears throat> but because of that, I went to New York, went back to New York, going back to New York theater, but when I got here, the stuff, the landscape had changed in that 10 years. All the actors that had been there, Went to Hollywood, a good actor. Then you had this whole, you had a lot of little. You went back to NEC, you said. Yeah, no, NEC. I wouldn't go back. I just went back to New York. Okay. I didn't like the theater scene. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. It was like very. What clickish. year was it? This was 1980. Okay. 80, yeah, 1980. Uh, but what I did do is I, I, I because remember I'm technical. Okay. I went and we started a group called the Attack Group with the great uh, uh, John Harris Jr. I love John, you know. We, 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 he's a technical person. We started this little group to support, was a, a group of, of technicians to support all the little theater productions, all the little black theater productions and dance productions around us. That's where David Shepard was part of, with a bunch of a piece of production on this channel show. Um, so that's what we did. But that fell apart from some other things. But, but that's, that's what we did. So we, that, that's what I did. I, I did that. And, uh, and that's what I like support. You know, there's somebody say, well, you'll never be the whatever. You know, you're you're like the guy behind the guy. You're, you're never going to be the whatever. So I said, huh. you know, but at the same time, because I didn't like the, what was happening in theater, I, 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 I basically was doing a lot of uh, calling into LIB and calling into BAI finally. Mm -hmm. And then I liked BAI, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bernard Weiss Emanations. Mm -hmm. So I volunteered to answer the phone. I went there and I answered and I answered the phone for him. Then after we didn't come, thank everybody. And then I said, oh, 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 Mr. White, can I speak to you? You know, and he said, I said, no, come on. He said, no, forget that. He said, yeah, yeah. I said, well, and he said, well, what's your interest? I said, well, you know, I, I, I have a radio background. I think I can do something for you because I, I was good at Vox Pop. They're doing, uh, taking a uh, 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 man on the street interviews, they're stringing them together so they make a story mm -hmm. without you narrating it, right? right? And so I said, well, I can help you do that. I can do it because I still your program. You have a theme, but I can go out and get like five or ten minutes of people on the street mm -hmm. and then we can play that and that's, introduce your theme. Mm -hmm. He said, well, that's a good idea. But he said, but what do you want to do? I said, well, you know, I, I, I do theater, but I, I think I want to do theater on radio. So, well, we do that. He said, you, you, I want you to help me with my, with my program, you know, do that, da da da. And so that's, that's how that started. But remember, that was like 1982, 83, somewhere around there. And you had turned away from Hollywood. Isn't that around the time Spike Lee was starting to make yes, his impact? Yes, 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 yes. Right. But I remember, I've never been a film person. Okay. I right. was a theater person, theater person. And then I became, a, I would want to say, radio person. Okay. And that's where it turned. Because you have to ask your question. I did my first real audio drama, I think, in 1986, somewhere okay. around there. Right. So we have to, well, well Sloan. No, what were you doing between 82 and 86? Four years. What, what, what were you doing? 
I was I was learning the station. What I knew about the station, this station is a bunch of cabals. They have little in groups. So I was I ingratiated myself to each group, helping out, uh, engineering, da 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 da. And then uh, somewhere in there, that's when I hooked up with Melvin. Well, we were, we were taping the forums for for Alambe and and, and Samori. You know the. Uh -huh. uh, well, I mean, I've been living a long time. Yeah, Samori. Yeah, Samori Marksman. We were still, because they we, we called him the bad. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so Alambe, they, he passed way before Everybody. Alambe. Right. Yeah, and but he, we called him the Batman and Robin of the movie. <laughs> it was, you know, it's quite funny. Uh, but we would do the tapes for them. And then we would then give them taste so they can do whatever it is. So 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 I organized a group called the Sound Gathers, and then and then you know we were like independent, blah blah. It doesn't matter. So that's so that's where I really started to do that. But at at the same time, I still kept my eye on what I wanted to do. And then finally, uh, what happened was uh, I met. I was I was doing modeling from 1980 to 1988. Yes. I modeled at the School of Visual Arts, right? Uh, uh, artist model. And I met this group they called Creative Unity, they called themselves Creative Unity. And they, they, they invited me to a show, and they was doing something, uh, whatever. And I said, well, I want to do a poem. And I did a, a County Cullen poem, I think. Okay. Just for their, for their little thing. And this thing. when they were on uh, Wall Street? No, 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 this is, no, this is, no, no, I'm sorry. That's that's the station, but the uh, school, school, yeah, school of Visual Arts on 23rd Street. Right. That's where I met them. And I tell them, I said, you know, they were doing these skits, stuff like that. They were like playing Koch and Reagan. I said, you know, y'all are really good, but you're black. They're not going to accept you on stage like that. I do radio. Why don't you come to the station? You can do your stuff as, uh, on radio, mm -hmm. and people can't see you. They'll right. just hear your voice like right. that. Right. And they was in it. So I said, but, but look, we have this folio, this, this newspaper. But they had to, why don't you, maybe I can get it to you helping out with the newspaper, get a little thing for the newspaper, mm -hmm. and I'll train you in radio. Right. So that's what happened. I like, created Creative, Creative Unity for right. Creative Collective for radio. They, they, they got their program on radio, right? right. And then, then there's a whole thing. People did not want me on radio. I, I, it's a long story, but anyway, uh, the point is, I, I, I yeah, find... Yeah, I, this yeah, is but, around the time when I met you, when we yeah. really met. We, we had met before, but this is the time we started talking yeah, more. Yeah, you know? yeah. D.L. James. Yeah, yeah, L. James. Around he, that time, he was... Yeah, he was... He was he, 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 he had... Uh, and Mr. Perkinson was part of his group, right? You know yeah. that kind of thing. But they all go through the station. Remember, I'm an engineer. I'm just helping people. Okay. Nobody, nobody knows who I am. I'm just right. helping people, right. yeah. you know, like that. And so, uh, so what happened? I got my opportunity because what I did, I trained Creative Unity in 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 in, 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 in radio, right. right? And so the first thing we did. Uh, well, did, did, did this thing with the night before Christmas, something like that, with, 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 with effect the voice of of, of uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, Brian Gum or whatever. And then right about that time, there was a thing happening and Sharpton called for a day of absence right. over the bridge, right? Mm -hmm. right? Now, because I was a Negro Ensemble Company, I knew, Doug, I knew Douglas Turner was a piece, Day of right. Absence. I said, people ain't gonna know what Day of Absence really mean. I wanted to do the play, Day of Absence, his one, his one yeah. act play yeah. on the radio. So what I did was I took Creative Unity, it was the middle of the day, early morning, and I basically used the entire station. This was the, what there I say, this? This was 89, I guess. Okay. No, 80, no 80, 87. Uh, whatever, I have to look up whenever Sharpton did his thing, uh -huh. or, or that day of absence was. But what I did was I used each studio as, like, if you look at a play, right, you might have the kitchen here and the, the outdoors over there, whatever have you, and the lights just come up when you, and you act. Well, I used each different space. I, I put the microphone up. Mm -hmm. So we were in different spaces. For instance, I used the, I used the air conditioning car. At this, there's a scene where you have the telephone operators. I used as the ambiance and, and mic that. It was, it was genius. Nobody knew what I was doing. I, I thought, and I said, what the heck's going on? Then from that moment on, I did only live. Well, that's live. That was live. Right. And then I just started to do these, these mainly black themes. They're just doing these audio dramas right there in the studio. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and then I became arts director. At WBI. BAI. Then if you look at my resume, you see the first thing I did as arts director was uh, Animal Farm. Okay. Right? So the things when I'm arts director was more, it wasn't black themed anymore. It was like everything. I only Christmas, did, right. yeah, I only did one black themed thing at the end when I did Glorious Monster Bell of the Horn. Okay. Oh, I also did Palm Wine Drink at the public theater. So, so I did a couple of, but that was more African. You know, that, well, my point is, Everything else was like uh, 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 the Phantom Toll Booth, yeah. well, things that were inclusive. Like, but I got the yeah, whole I'm station involved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had the whole station involved, and and we had these things. Like we did, I think it was Pinocchio one time. Or whatever we did, and you know, we had an orchestra of like twenty-two people. The and the, the, the technical crew was fifteen people, three hundred people in the audience. It was amazing, you know. So, so I got known for these huge audio dramas. 
And you know, people to give you a, a story. The, the last story I got to stop now. I think I. I know. I'm, 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 I'm okay, so we, your WBAI. We know you were progressive. You were leading all kinds of theaters and, yeah. and stuff like that. Now, you you brought up two names, uh, Elombe and what's his name? Samoy Marksman. Samoy. So you're talking about that? That's international. These yeah. are two people who really dealt with this thing. Yeah. Cause, cause right now, presently, you're living in South Africa. Yeah. Okay, now these are two people I know that was talking about Africa. Oh, especially Lambe. Oh my you know, gosh, forever. Lambe. Yeah. You know, forever. Lambe, friends with presidents, you, you know. know. Right, right, sir. So I want to just tie into that, like, at the, because WBI has a very political wing to it. There's a very, besides, you know, I know you were in the theater and stuff like that, but you were tying it into the politics too. Yeah. So right. how did this lead to your, 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 you know, like expanding to this diaspora? Because that's what amazes me about you. You have to remember, I remember you were sleeping. At the place on 125th Street in the the bathhouse, you used to like that bathhouse. No, no, no. I had kids. We no, I know, no, I know. No, what happened was I was staying with somebody and they needed their place. So then I had to go someplace. So I just thought, oh, let me go to the bathhouse. Like right. that. Yeah. And then you was you was like you and you, you you was always moving around, but you were, but always what 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 brought, brought us together was this thing like you were you were you were in, you were into uh, Henry Dumas and you were into. Larry Neal, yeah. and I'm saying I'm Larry Neal, and you and you have this progressive wing about you. So give me some of that, like uh, okay. So we got to that. So you started to use WBAI as a base for your for cultural for, for cultural, cultural activity, for, for progressive cultural thing, right? Okay. That that's basically what what it is, you know. Right. I guess you want to say that. Plus okay. You, now, okay, mm -hmm. now, okay. And Bernard was there, and they had this real yeah. progressive kind of thing. That now, what? How? Why did that change? Because you changed that. That changed, and then you left that. And and there was and there was a lot of you, you talk about cabals, but there was a lot of there's a lot of, we gotta we gotta talk about it because yeah, it changed okay. because it was the station that I listened to all the time at that one time because I could get information political and art information mm. and they played the music. Now that started to change during your tenure, mm. like on the end of that. Yeah. Okay. Let me stop here and go and go back real 